Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, I'm here because uh, Ritu asked me to do this. Uh, we partnered a few years ago when I was in PepsiCo, and they did a super job of the event that uh, we'd sponsored and we are part of. So thank you, Ritu, for inviting me here to do this session. So I'm going to talk about uh, a very simple concept. Is it online, offline, or below the line? Why do I say that? Because almost every single thing with retail and shopping has become promotion right now. There is not a single item which is not on promotion. You walk the aisles, you log on to the net, every single thing is below the line. So let's look at one transformation, which is the transformation of airports and travel. Uh, in the past, if you needed to go anywhere, you would have to go to a travel agent. And the biggest differentiator of the travel agent was a conditioned showroom. That's it. Nothing else. There were huge posters of Venice and Rome and this and that. But the travel agent would have absolutely no clue about either the destination or your preferences. Next slide, please. This is how airports were, you know, not many years ago, just five years ago. And if you move to the next slide, this is where airports are today. A dramatic transformation. So you talk of online, you talk of offline, you talk of services, you talk of experiences. Every single thing is bundled into this new concept called the airport. Okay. Next slide. Today, great airports are cities by themselves. Now go back, please. Great airports are cities by themselves. I'm just coming off uh, last week after visiting Istanbul. They've just built the world's largest airport. They already have 50 million passengers. They've built the largest airport competing against Frankfurt, Munich, London, and Paris. Okay, it's an absolutely gigantic airport. And every single thing you can think of is available under that roof there. So airports are cities by themselves today. You go to Singapore, Shanghai, you go to Malaysia. Airports are cities by themselves. And the biggest differentiator of a great airport today is you have everything under one roof, but the experience is absolutely superb. And there's a lesson for us for retail and whatever you want to do. So let's look at the retail market. Next slide, please. India is a big retail market. Uh, this is about 1 trillion by 2020. Next year, not very far away. Employs about 40 million people, and it has 15 million retail outlets. You know, for years, I have been involved with retail. I've been involved with brands and business models. India is a very unique market. No country in the world has so many outlets. No country in the world. Not China, nothing. To give you a sense, in the mobile phone market, at that point of time, when I used to run Nokia, China had about 80 to 100,000 retail points. At that point, India had 300,000 retail points for mobile phones. <clears throat> so India is a huge retail market because we earn every day. You know, close to 75, 80% of the population lives under $2 a day, about 40 lives under $1 a day. And that's the reason why people shop day in and day out. And that's the reason why the business model which will evolve in retail will be uniquely Indian. I think trying to copy any other market will be an absolute waste of time. Okay, don't even attempt it. Okay, America is not the benchmark, Indonesia is not the benchmark, China is not the benchmark. In no category have I seen the Indian retail market behave like an international market. In no category. Okay, that much I can tell you, having seen at least 40, 50 categories. Okay, so this is retail for you. If you look at consumer spend, <clears throat> this is how the consumer spend has evolved over the last 13 years. <coughs> Food, beverages and tobacco is still the largest about 28% of the consumer household income per annum, which is about 300,000 rupees. Okay, just keep that in mind. That's the kind of money. Out of that 300,000 rupees, about 28% is being spent on food, beverages, and tobacco. About 6% is on clothing and footwear, and that's roughly remained constant over the last 13 years, but I believe it will take a big boom in the coming years. Clothing apparel will take a big boom. Home furnishing will take a big boom in the coming years. Rent, fuel, and power is again similar at about 14%. Transportation and communication is about 18%. Education has more than doubled from 1.7 in 2005 to 3.9%. Others are, you know, all the other miscellaneous stuff which is uh, coming through. So if you look at it, most advanced countries would have food, beverage, and tobacco spend at less than 10%. Okay, will India get there? Not as yet. It will take significant amount of time before India gets there. So, if you look at this and then ask yourself, what are the big categories in retail today? These are the top four categories in retail today. Obviously, food and grocery is number one. 
obviously apparel is number two. Obviously, you have jewelry at number three. And finally, you have IT, electronics, etc. at number four. These are the four big formats, the four big categories. Now, if you're setting up a big mall, you're setting up, setting up anything, you obviously need the big brands in these categories to come through. Otherwise, you will not have enough you know, purchase or enough uh, sales going to happen. Let's look at the old retail business model of India and how it's changing. If you look at it historically, retailers and brands have never partnered well in India. You know, it's very difficult for both people to understand that they need each other. Okay? I've tried my level best when I was on the brand side to convince retailers that they need to partner. Somehow retailers think that they own the consumer, which is not true at all. If you think you own the consumer, you're living in a very different and wrong world. The same problem existed with telecom companies. Telecom companies did the same. They thought they owned the consumer. Finally, telecom became a pipe. So retail will become a pipe if you do not innovate and if you do not build experiences. You do not own the consumer. So please get that off your head. Okay? So true business will come through true partnerships. Okay? Select a few brands, partner with them. The rest will follow, I guarantee you. When they see that the benefits of your partnership are very good for people. Let's look at the old retail business model. The old retail business model was have a few lost leaders, put it at the right price, draw crowds there. Okay? Sell, for example, soft drinks at the price of water. That's a lost leader. Bring people in. Second, do private label, especially in food and beverage. Try and do as much private label as possible so that your margins are better there. Third, monetize shelf space and window space. Hey, this is the aisle space, this is the window space, please pay me 100,000 rupees per month for this or whatever it is. And finally, assisted sales, somebody on the floor to assist you. This was the old model. Okay, by and large, nothing has changed for quite some time. Okay, so next, the old retail enablers have been the following. A lot of emphasis on supply chain. How do I take out cost in the supply chain? How do I minimize inventory? How do I maximize OTIF from my brand partners? That's been a big challenge, and many people have addressed it very well. Second, lighting. How do I ensure that the ambience of the shop, the experience is damn good? When big format retail came into India, the bulk of them started in the south, in Bangalore. And I'm from Bangalore. We could see the cascading effect on big retailers like MKM, etc. Suddenly, lighting went up, beautiful lights, beautiful ambience, everything was visible. So lighting was a huge experience creator in retail. Aisle management was very important. How the consumer goes through your shop, lots of shopper tracking studies. Check out counter, counter merchandise. At the exit counter, what all could you put there which was impulse so that you could maximize the last two items on sale there. And finally, barcode scanners. This was the biggest innovation in technology for the last 50 years. Why? Now, your vendor could ship the exact quantity you received the exact quantity, you knew your inventory, but most important, by scanning the barcode, you knew which SKU was selling or which brand at what price. That was the advantage. So then end-to-end -end availability of information in terms of what was selling. But many times, the supermarket or the retail did not share that information with the brands and say, how do we collaborate? What can we do better? People who did that gain, people who didn't do that, just kept that data as it is with them, did not benefit at all. So this was the old retail enablers. So how relevant is this model today? I submit to you data as of yesterday. I was looking at data. Last year, 6,800 physical stores from 300 brands globally have closed shutters. 7,000 stores from 300 brands have closed shutters in the last one year, physical stores. And there are some marquee names there, like Marks and Spencers, etc., etc. So some marquee names there. So clearly, this model is not working. This model needs tweaking. This model needs change. Only then it will work, otherwise no. Why is this? Number one, shopper expectations are higher than ever before in every format being driven by online. Online defines everything today. And I believe that the Indian online marketeers have been extremely smart in terms of the business models they have brought to the table. You take it, don't like it, return it. All kinds of business models have come. As a result of it, because of online, 
all shopping is about an exchange of experiences. It's no longer, I will, it's no longer the old travel agent. Go stand in a queue, sit there, drink a cup of tea with him, then go back home after for half an hour. It's no longer that. You sit in your house, in your hall, start ordering whatever you want. One of the things we notice is that in the past, consumers were very scared of luxury brands and premium brands. That's not true anymore. Today, consumers sit at home, go through the pages of Louis Vuitton or Hermes or Bali or whatever it is, easily. They do not feel scared of big brands. Earlier, consumers were very scared of entering the showroom of even a large format store like Lotus Inn, Indore. That's how they scared, scared they were. Today, thanks to online, brands are very close to them. Whether they can afford it or not is a different matter. So all shopping today is an exchange of experiences. Can you offer an experience which is different? So I submit to you, products are commodity. You can buy the product anywhere, anytime you want. You can buy it online, you can buy it offline. You can do anything you want. But the experience is the differentiator. The experience you give, a frictionless experience online. Okay, a seamless experience, great delivery. This whole bundle of experiences is the real differentiator. Products today are commodity as far as shopping is concerned. So how does one really build the experience is what you need to think about. That experience, a lot of it is being driven by the content you generate, not the data. People have always had data. I submit to you, and I've said this many times over, most companies use less than 5% of the data they have. You are using less than 5% of the data you have, I promise you. You are collecting retail data every day, but you look at the data every month or every week. Okay? I guarantee you that you are not using your data. So data is not the holy grail. Focus on content. How do you make that engaging with consumers so that you build a better experience? Content is the differentiator. One of the things we are noticing thanks to online, online and offline both, high personalization is the key. How do you drive more and more personalization? So if you go to the London uh, Terminal 3 uh, lounge of Virgin Airways and other people, you'll find a stall for a company called the Left Shoe Company. So I went there some, you know, a year or two years ago and said, hey, what is this Left Shoe Company? They said if you're a right-hander, your left shoe, left foot would be a little bigger. If you're a left-hander, your right foot will be a little bigger. So all they do is they make you stand on the machine, they actually contour your feet and then they sell shoes to you. After eight weeks, they come from Italy or wherever it is. Ultimate in customization. You have a number, you can order it from everywhere. Brooks Brothers does the same. In apparel, customization and constant ordering after that is the game. Okay, so that's why everybody is trying to do custom fit right now. So high personalization, both online and offline, is the key. So I submit to you that the competition to retail, the competition to where you are today, is not other retailers, but it's actually other experiences. And some people are actually realizing this. Uh, Commercial Street in Bangalore, a few years ago, and I think they still do it, I'm not sure if they do it today. Uh, a few years ago, all the retailers on Commercial Street ganged up and said, let's have a big Diwali Bonanza. Let's have a big New Year Bonanza. So you don't need to compete with each other on the same street. If you combine together and create a better experience for Diwali or whatever it is, I believe you'll have a much better chance of success. Okay, this I will cut, you will cut, and both of us will lose money, I think is uh, not going to get you anywhere. So the competition to retail is other experiences. So people are toggling between movies, shopping, eating out. That sum of money is available. Now it's for you, for you to build that experience and make it relevant so that consumers come to you. If you look at the leaders in on-demand experiences today, how easy people have made this. Look at these three examples. Amazon, Uber, Netflix. They're the ultimate in ease of on-demand experience. Stand anywhere in the country, punch the Uber or Ola, somebody comes, you know what's the cab driver's name, what's his number, how much time he'll come, etc. Completely done. Okay, peace of mind. Equally, you know, you, know, you can tag, you can put your pin and tell all your relatives how you're going and where you're going. Very easy to do. Amazon, overnight delivery, prime delivery, all kinds of stuff. Netflix, I don't need to wait till 2.30 or 4.30 to see a particular program. I have a bunch of programs and a bouquet to choose from. These people, these three have made 
the whole concept of their service absolutely frictionless and seamless for the consumers. These are the people who are going to drive the consumer expectation of other categories and other shopping and other experiences. So, except Amazon, the other guys are not retailers. Amazon is one part retailer. So, a lot of the learning from consumer behavior online, this seamlessness, this frictionlessness will come into retail in the coming years if it's not already come. So, my submission to you, what should retail do? Number one, you have no choice but to invest in IT. You have absolutely no choice. Second, since I said experience, you have to ensure that the face-to-face -face experience in the shop moves up. That's, as we've got more automated, we have lost the heart-to-heart -heart or face-to-face -face engagement. Today, if you, I, I challenge you and I promise you, you go to any retail outlet, the person selling apparel has no clue of sizes. Absolutely no clue. The person selling food has no clue of ingredients. The person selling whiskey has no clue of vintage of whiskey. The person selling electronics might be better off. So if that is the state of people in the face-to-face -face business there, okay, how are you going to create an experience? So I would actually encourage you to invest and train people for significantly better training, significantly better trained personnel, and so that they can deliver a great experience. If you don't do that, remember, your shop will become a commodity. Okay, because online is there everywhere. So you'll become a commodity, and that's the start of the death. Second, reinvent retail space. I gave you the example of airports. Airports today are no longer just about check-in and check-out. They're no longer about standing in a queue before uh, the, the vestibule or the door to enter the plane. It's a complete experience in itself. So reinvent the retail space. Create communities. If you're selling books, create a book lover club. Have book readings. Get the community of book readers to come in. If you're doing music, get the music community to come in for you. Create that experience. That experience is worth a lot. And not many people can really do that. All this requires, this creation of experiences is ideas. It's not about money. In fact, the best ideas will have the lowest cost to do. So think more ideas about experience, okay? Offer related bundle services. It might shock you to know that India is not getting enough tailors, enough plumbers, enough painters. We are not skilling them at all. So not many people are coming in. So if you look at a millennial you know, couple today, they truly don't know where to go for either the painter, tinker, tailor, soldier, spy, whatever it is. They don't know where to go. But if you are somebody selling home construction products, you should be able to offer a related service. The hospitals are doing it already. The hospitals are doing post-hospital care already. Because they realize that in some cases, that's very important. So you have to think about your product category and ask yourself, what other allied service can I offer which will make the consumer come back to me and tie back the experience? And finally, create social media space. Every airport I have visited in the last one year has selfie points, many selfie points. Every airport. Even the Indira Gandhi International Airport here, as soon as you land, there are two, three selfie points below that, the, the brass stuff there. So how do you create selfie points which are magical? People want that. People want to say, hey, I've been here. Mumbai has created many selfie points right now. The city of Mumbai. Okay, so you really need to think about create social media space. Let me give you one example of what I'm talking about. The selfie impact on retail, on apparel specifically. It's interesting that, you know, a lot of people take selfies. When you take a selfie, most selfies, especially men's selfies, are waist upwards. Waist upwards. It's only women who take a selfie in front of a mirror when they're wearing a dress or a sari. Men don't take, very rarely do men take full length selfies. It's always here. So what's the impact of this? Which I am seeing over the last six months to nine months. I'm sure there are some apparel retailers here. I'll give you my insight. Number one, traditionally the apparel business has sold four shirts or four tops to one bottom or one trouser. Four is to one is the ratio. Okay. Now, thanks to selfies, we are actually seeing a jump in that ratio from four to five is to one now. More and more tops are being sold as opposed to bo bottom is still one, tops are being sold. But here's the amazing insight. People are selling less whites and less blues, selling more patterns and designs. Because a selfie with a white shirt like mine or a blue shirt which I tend to wear is a very boring selfie. 
Okay, so people are wearing lots of patterns and shirts, and that is what is impacting sales. So the selfie culture, selling more tops, selling more design, selling less boring stuff. That's what's happening thanks to selfie. And trust me, online behavior is going to drive a number of choices in your categories. So, I believe one of the things consumers have today is they have a very rushed life. They have a very rushed life. Okay, everything is, you know, in a rush. 25% of Indians are skipping their breakfast every morning because they're in a rush. The most important thing, if you really want to be a great shopping experience, is you need to conserve consumer energy. Every single thing you do to consume, conserve consumer energy, ask yourself that question in your boardroom or in your meetings. Is this initiative going to conserve consumer energy? Or is it going to frustrate the consumer? People give you all kinds of words, frictionless, etc., etc. What does it mean to the consumer? I spend less energy, but I get a great experience. So less energy, maximum experience. That is going to be the motto in the way consumers will interact with all of you. So in summary, I would say online, offline, or below the line. Most stuff in retail is price-led at this point of time. Online experiences are driving consumer expectations offline significantly. I gave you the three examples of Amazon, Uber, and Netflix. Anytime experience is what it is. Products or commodities can be bought in via any business model. They can be bought in a pawn shop, they can be bought in a supermarket, they can be bought in a hypermarket, they can be bought online. So the product is a commodity. When you focus on the product as a commodity, you'll only end up price discounting. If you focus on the experience, then your product will be able to command a better price thanks to that experience. The best experience I gave you was the airport experience and how airports have changed significantly over the last 10 years. I believe retail will also change significantly. The issue is not about data, the issue is about insight and the ability to create that experience. Okay. Please partner with brands because that's not something that Indians do very well, both on the brand side as well as the retail side. Because each person is arguing that my brand is better than yours. If you think of yourself as owning the consumer, you will end up as a pipe. You will end up as a pipe, you will not create value either for the consumer or for yourself. So your challenge is to partner with brands and ensure that you create experiences which are memorable so that consumers come back to you. So create communities via your retail space and that can be a big winner in itself. So at the end of 24 minutes, uh, thank you very much ladies and gentlemen and thank you Ritu for calling me here. Thank you and have a great day.